It takes much, much more time for women to really practice how to use Bitcoin, to actually make their first transaction. We have this uh, gender pay gap day every year and it makes me really angry because the even bigger issue is the gender wealth gap. And if women don't start investing in Bitcoin, uh, then this gap will increase over time. It's weird that we just create money out of nowhere. Like, we will not experience this during your a lifetime that women will own 50% of Bitcoin. You're full-time in Bitcoin or are you still working something else also? Yeah, that's uh, that's a great question because uh, I heard the rumors about myself that I uh, quit my, my fiat job and work 100% in Bitcoin. That's uh, not true. Uh, not yet, unfortunately, but I'm working hard on it. So I made my next step. I I told my uh, my manager that I will quit this year. So, uh, yeah, I'm almost there. <laughs> so you uh, are planning to quit. You already told your manager that you will quit this year, but you did not like take the leap till till now. That's uh, that's <laughs> that's not. No, so why, I, why do you, yeah. Why, yeah. why do you think it's the the uh, other rumors that you already quitted? I don't know. I don't know how, how this happens. So people tell me all the time, I've heard you, you already quit. I don't know. Maybe it's because, I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer. Maybe it's because I, I, I plan it. I talk about it. I, I, I was talking about it last year, actually. So uh, maybe that's causing it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still uh, waiting for a few events to happen. But uh, I, I set a deadline. I have to... Uh, to quit, I want to do Bitcoin education. Uh, I already do, and uh, I, I just feel I need more time for all the ideas I have for all the projects I want to, yeah, I want to do in the near future. I love it. I myself, I quit it uh, on end of February, like still ma till March. Uh, since March, I'm all in in Bitcoin. Like this um, year, 2024. This year, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. This, congrats. This year, like I, I, I get this year. Like it's now my, it's the third month, right? It's it's March. Yeah, it's my yes. third, third March uh, full time in in Bitcoin, and it's amazing. Honestly, uh, I love it. And December, I said to my girlfriend, I want to quit next year probably around November, December next year, but it was then oh, February okay. that I quit it. So it came way faster than I thought. Uh, but uh, I love that you you took that, uh, that, that you were planning to take this step. What inspired you? Like, why, why are you doing that? Yeah, so I uh, fell into the rivet hole uh, more than three years ago. And uh, yeah, it was uh, a coincidence of, um, let's say, uh, yeah, lucky coincidences, one after the other. Um, my little brother told me, uh, yeah, let's have a look at, uh, at Dogecoin. It's pumping. Could you please invest? He was uh, too young back then. So I did that uh, for him or yeah, I did it instead of him. And then I saw, okay, uh, Bitcoin is kind of pricey. Uh, what happened? What did I miss in the past? And, uh, yeah, then I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I mean, you know, the story, right? And then, uh, two weeks after that, I met a colleague, uh, at my previous employer and he told me to read the Bitcoin standard and that made all the difference. It really changed my life because, um, I studied, uh, business mathematics. So I also took economics courses, um, uh, like more than 10 years ago or so I, or around about 10 years ago, uh, when I, did I start to study? It's, it's a while ago. Um, I thought, okay, that's weird that we just create money out of nowhere, like helicopter drop and all these terminologies. I remember them from my uh, macro courses. And I wanted to start discussions with my, um, yeah, with my friends at university, but they were not so interested. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm just too stupid to understand how, how, uh, a proper system works. I uh, don't know. And then I did not think about it anymore. But when I read the Bitcoin standard many years after, after I had these thoughts about money, I thought, okay, I was not that stupid. So people are really discussing money and they 
discuss it from a very different perspective. They they say uh, things like um, our money is broken, uh, like Lynn Alden is 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 uh, or named her book uh, "Broken Money," right? And that really changed my life because I thought, okay, I can maybe maybe I should trust myself more often than trusting others or the system. Uh, this was the first lesson. And also I thought, okay, I, I might have a very different future. I don't need to be stuck in this hamster wheel. So I really felt like being stuck. Uh, I was uh, working, um, yeah, in, in, in analytics uh, for uh, different companies, also in the, um, for an IT consultancy. And I felt, okay, if I get promoted, maybe I get more money. Maybe I get the chance to, I don't know, afford, um, um, yeah, a house or afford, um, a flat, but then I have to work even more. I have to, uh, work at the weekends, what I did back then. And it was just, uh, the future I, I was uh, seeing for myself was really exhausting. So with Bitcoin, I thought, okay, maybe I can do something different. I didn't know what to do back then, but I saw, okay, there is a, yeah, there's the chance for a brighter future for myself, but also for many, many people on this planet. And yeah, after months and years of studying Bitcoin intensely, I, I really feel uh, this is a very, very, I don't know, crucial opportunity. And it's, it's, it's a powerful tool. Bitcoin is a powerful tool, but we need to use the tool and I want to teach people how to use it. And this is what I want to do. And hopefully I can do it uh, for a living uh, starting uh, this year, latest, the end of the year. I, I love it so much. And I, I, I interviewed so many people already with, with Bitcoin and there are some people that are older, some people that are younger in, in Bitcoin and they always have like, there are two types, like there are th those types that already understood like sound money. They're already like kind in a low time preference uh, mindset. And then they got to Bitcoin and then all of a sudden, like it made sense Bitcoin, but Bitcoin did not really change their life because they already like kind of in that Austrian economics mindset before mm. rarely, but there are people that got Austrian economics and sound money before Bitcoin. Um, but then there are the people that were not in that mindset and those people got their life changed a lot uh, with Bitcoin because all of a the sudden they asking questions that they did never asked before. Yes. Uh, and what I ask myself is, are we now just in a really early adopter group? And that's why we have so many changes in lives or is Bitcoin actually technology that will uh, change society on a broader scale? Like what, what's your thoughts on this? I mean, it's difficult because, uh, many people, they, yeah, they face different challenges, have different mindsets, etc. Uh, but I think it's the latter. Um, I, I experienced it myself. So, uh, I, yeah, when I started looking into Bitcoin, suddenly everything felt so interesting. So I, I, I really had the impression I was, uh, looking at a bright star and I wanted to know everything about this and, uh, Bitcoin is so, so multidisciplinary. So you, you need to look at so, so many topics. And since I experienced, okay, um, the way I was looking at economics is different now. So I thought this was true. And now I think this makes more sense. And maybe I, 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 I live in a different truth than before. And, uh, yeah, and you can, think about or think in this way in terms of many other subjects for example uh or yeah what what is true what is truth uh what is reality it's it's it, yeah you can really um yeah dive deep in these topics and i think if people experience this for the first time and experience okay the world I see it, or I saw it, it is maybe different. Then this might, um, yeah, be the first piece of a new puzzle. And then you, you continue, um, yeah, going this journey and just question everything. Um, 
yeah, and I, I, and I see it uh, with, um, yeah, peers around, uh, yeah, even uh, colleagues uh, at work. I, I work for uh, a pretty conservative company at the moment, at least um, four days per week. And um, of course, it's different for everybody, but I try to orange pill if it makes sense. I mean, uh, I cannot talk about uh, Bitcoin all day long, even th though I would like to, but uh, I experienced the same. So uh, one of my colleagues, uh, he he read the Bitcoin standard uh, because I, I, I told him it made a difference for me. And then after two weeks or so, he came back to me and he had also this uh bright eyes uh, looking at me uh, like uh, yeah his his world uh, seemed to be uh, very different and and i think bitcoin can be uh, that first piece of a new puzzle this new picture um yeah or th this new new pair of glasses uh, you can uh, look through uh, it's, it's it's wonderful and, and i hope that's the case i, I always hope that Bitcoin will change part of society or maybe a major part of society. Uh, there's the possibility that we are just like an early uh, group and then people will just use Bitcoin as, as, as money uh, and, and will go on. But w one thing that will Bitcoin definitely change, as I think, is the incentives. Because when we have fiat money, you have the incentive to spend it faster because it's devaluing at the rapid pace when you have bitcoin it's appreciating actually on 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 uh, on a large scale so you have the incentives to not spend it right now and think of spending twice which lowers your time preference which is confusing for new people but lowering your time preference means that you have a longer time horizon uh which is uh, i feel like we should change those <laughs> Things lower time preference means a longer time yeah. thing. Uh, and it could actually change something in society because incentives are everything uh, in today's world, in all of the worlds. Because who was it? Charlie Munger was it to say? I mean, he's not a Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin person, but Charlie Munger said, show me your five biggest incentives and I show you what we, you will do. So mm -hmm. when we change with Bitcoin, the incentives, this will change uh, in a fundamental way, a society, as a, at least I think so. Um, let's go back to the, the, the what you did. Um, you said you studied business math mathematics. What, what yes. actually is that? <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's different uh, at different universities, but the way it was, um, yeah, designed uh, uh, at the university where I studied it was uh, in Mannheim. In uh, Germany, uh, you have mathematics classes. It was, I think, 55% of the uh, curriculum and economics classes and business classes and a little bit of computer science. So programming basics. Um, and I, you have, you can choose at least in Mannheim. It's, it's, it's the case. Uh, if you would like to go deeper into economics or go deeper into business, and I chose uh, economics, so I also had uh, game theory classes, and I also wrote my um, master thesis about uh, game theory, actually, and I read the um, PhD thesis uh, of uh, John Nash. So he's um, yeah, he he he's kind of the father of of game theory. And actually, game theory is a mathematical uh, discipline. Uh, many people think it's it's uh, pure economics, but it's actually mathematics, and it's used in economics. Yeah. But so this was before Bitcoin, right? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so so I I was done. Um, in two thousand fifteen. Uh, but one of my uh. Uh, Pierce, um, she wrote her bachelor thesis about Bitcoin in 2012, but I didn't take it seriously back then. No, I, I, I knew okay, Bitcoin exists, and it's uh, it's 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 purely uh, technical. It's uh, purely made up, working in the internet, but uh, it's I, it didn't catch my interest. It it my interest was caught by by the Bitcoin standard. Interesting, interesting. And when you say the thesis was about game theory, uh, like what's game theory in general, like outside of Bitcoin? And maybe then let's dive into like, how does this apply to Bitcoin? Yeah. So uh, like I mentioned, uh, game theory is a mathematical discipline. So you kind of have, um, yeah, you design a framework 
um, and then you you have uh, yeah certain uh, agents in this uh, framework called players, and they interact with each other, and there are rules uh, how they can interact, and there are strategies uh, that these agents or players uh, use, and then you can see okay, given these circumstances and given these rules, what will be the outcome? And you could also uh, design or, um, yeah, a chess, for example, is a, uh, could be designed in a game theoretical way. You have players, uh, player one and player two, and you have the strategies and the rules. And you can see, uh, yeah, given um, maybe a certain strategy uh, from player one, what is the best um, answer? of player two. Yeah, and you can uh, yeah, use these uh, models or frameworks and uh, game designs uh, to, to answer uh, many questions. Or uh, you can kind of model behavior, people's behavior, uh, gi or given uh, they act rational, what people, uh, of course, uh, don't, uh, at least not always. Um, yeah, but that's basically it. And then, like for for me, game theory in Bitcoin is like uh, you play all the, the 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 things that will happen and the natural incentives that people have. Like you basically bet on people being greedy uh, when yes. you bet on Bitcoin, yes. uh, and it is like a pretty safe bet. Uh, is that the the game theory around around Bitcoin, or like how do who does how does that apply now? Yeah. So actually. Um... It is extremely beautiful to, to, to look at Bitcoin from a game theoretical perspective because uh, what we have, or at least what I experience in, let's say, everyday life, there are conflicts. For example, um, yeah, let's assume uh, we have an issue with our climate, uh, right? And you would like to... to to behave in a certain way, not to damage your environment. But then um, you come across conflicts because if, a, uh, if it's uh, cheaper to use the plane than the train, then one heart maybe beats for uh, using the train and your other heart beats for uh, go for the cheaper price, right? So you have uh, this inner people in yourself fighting with each other. So what are you going to do? Who's going to win? Your inner economist or uh, your inner business person or your, I don't know, um, altruistic uh, world uh, lovingness. I don't know how to, how, how to say. And with Bitcoin, this is so different because you don't have these conflicts. So if you're greedy, Bitcoin is fine for you. If you love the planet and you would like to change the world, I think Bitcoin is fine for you. If you're uh, stupid and you forget your keys, it's great for everybody. Like it's 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 so perfect in terms of incentives. It's not causing uh, inner conflicts, and that's why I I love Bitcoin so much, and I love working for Bitcoin so much. I, I, I love that explanation from you. Uh, extremely. Um, that's. <sighs> For, for me, it's always like the one question before we get into also Les Famorosh and, and what you're also, also doing in in uh, Bitcoin. Um, what was like the, you said the Bitcoin standard was like really key for you to, to understand Bitcoin. Yeah. Was there some key concept or some key property or key moment in the book or something around that where like this, this made you click it or was it more gradually then like you get that, you then get that and the puzzle came together. It was just something that was like, oh, this, this was really interesting. And that's why I'm now like really into Bitcoin. Mm, yeah, I think the book is, uh, yeah, it's really perfect and brilliant and explains uh, the concept pretty well. So I, I don't know if there's a, if there's one key moment, uh, there were many key moments. So first of all, the necessity of a scarce asset to make money work. I was not aware of it. And why was it a key moment for me? I mean, I studied economics. I took economics courses and I, I, uh, I also, um, yeah, did well in the exams and still I did not think about it. So this was really crazy in my head. I thought, okay, how can this happen? You, 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 you go to university, you kind of trust the, 
trust academia, right? What, how can this be that it's the first time you read this and you did not read it 10 years back then? So this was one key moment. And uh, yeah, also Seyfedi Namus uh, was explaining why uh, all the buildings are so ugly, the new ones we 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 uh, create right and many years back um you had nice buildings with nice i don't know ornaments around around and uh, i was also wondering so all these little questions i had in my mind why are um uh yeah why are why is housing so expensive uh why do we need to work harder why do people need to have uh two jobs or even more like these little uh, questions. Um, so this book had nice answers. Uh, maybe you can criticize the answers. I'm also fine for, for, uh, with that, but this was the first time that, um, yeah, that I was thinking about money and yeah, all, all these uh, little uh, steps that, uh, yeah, that you had to think about when, um, yeah, when you, you look into, look into the, the world and all the issues like housing etc uh there was an answer with this book. it's so fascinating for me that uh like first of all we don't learn about money in the school like when we're like 10 12 15 years old or like maybe 16 17 year old it's fascinating that we don't learn about money at all at least i did not uh, in school me neither but then when you go to university and you actually study economics Yes. you still don't get the full picture it's like <laughs> why yeah. do you know why this is <laughs> yeah i mean you you could you could argue the system doesn't want us to know and but i think it's it, it's it's too easy to say the system i mean the system consists of many many people and people who act and make decisions etc i think it's a really huge blind spot I think teachers aren't aware, even if they teach economics uh, at school. I think maybe PhD students who teach uh, courses at university are not really aware. And of course, maybe there's a small group of people who don't want people to be aware, who are aware themselves. But I think it's a small group. I think that the bigger issue is that um, it's, a, it's a blind spot. And I think in maybe in 100 years, uh, people will look back, look at the way we are using money, the dollar and the euro, and they will say, how could they be so stupid? How could they have, why did they accept this money? It's, it's, it's designed uh, so badly. Uh, how, how could they, how could they use it? Why did they not fight it? Um, I think this will, will come. I don't know if it's in 100 years or in 200 years, but I think this realization will be there in, in humanity, in, hu hum um, in human DNA one day. Uh, yes, I'm also really the believer that my grandkids, like I'm now 25, so my grandkids will be born like in a lot of years, a <laughs> uh, long, long time. Um, I think they will ask me, why did your generation accept uh, money that was printed from the government? And why did you accept being stolen from? Yeah. I hope and I think that we will be at that point at some point in the future, probably with my grandkids, maybe with my grand grand grandkids. I don't know uh, how, how fast this transition goes, but we will be at that point where we're like, of course, money has to be uh, decentralized. Of, of course, money has to be scarce. Of course, all those properties of Bitcoin, yeah. of course, money has to be that way. It was always that way. And we know it from history. It's not like that all of a sudden we know the properties of perfect money. Those were discovered a long time ago. We know them not because of now. We know them because of a long history. So. Yeah, I I hope that that we learn from that, and I hope that uh, also our education system learns from that. Which also like uh, is an interesting um, part. How how do you look at the education system when there is more and more YouTube coming up, more and more podcasts coming up, more and more online courses coming up? 
Uh, also, Michael Saylor has some online university where you can listen to MIT uh, classes for free. Um, what, what does that with, with the education system when you basically have everything in like small tablet and you can just like let your kids um, learn that way and maybe like make a, a group. I saw it a lot of times where like a neighborhood made uh, like a small homeschooling group where like 10 uh, kids come to one house and the next time it's another house and they, they, they make in a more decentralized sense Uh, the education for the kids, which is also like kind of beautiful. I think in Austria, it's not even possible, uh, but uh, what will, like, what will education be like? And do you think that you as like a future Bitcoin educator could be like kind of a new school and the kind of a new education system that we're building? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Um, I have to admit, I was usually fine with the education system so i like going to school i like going to kindergarten i liked uh, also going to university uh but i i was kind of blind so i trusted um let's say uh, yeah the infrastructure i trusted uh, good intentions i i, tr I assumed uh, that people have good intentions etc and now um i see many many young people suffer They don't want to go to school. They don't like the content they learn. And I know, or I'm, I'm convinced that everybody wants to learn and everybody wants to contribute, but not, but not that way. So not sitting in a small room together with, I don't know, 30 other uh, people learning about stuff that is not relevant for their Uh, future or not relevant for for their everyday life so um i think it's always best if you can follow your interests and our world is becoming more and more complex and of course you cannot learn everything so uh we should strengthen young people or um children to uh, understand their abilities to understand what their interests are and then go for it and then learn in a more dynamic way. I, I, I mean, I experienced with my uh, uh, Bitcoin journey. So I was interested in a certain topic and then I was looking for content. Then I exchanged with people who, who were kind of expert in this sub subject. And the same should should be the case also with children. They have interests. So if there's someone interested in, uh, I don't know, in, in uh, computer science topics, uh, then there should be a way, of course, in combination with um, um, yeah, the internet and maybe, I don't know, YouTube videos or uh, whatever, uh, there could be many concepts. But, but a way, a flexible way to meet that the content meets interest. And it doesn't make sense to, to, to have 30 children, 30 different children with different interests and abilities uh, to make them learn the same and then uh, put grades on their heads and say, you're good and you're not. That, it does not make any sense, not anymore. Our world is complex and so should be our a way to, to, to learn, or at least the, the, um, the tablet of, or, or yeah, the, the plate of opportunities should be much bigger. I totally 100% agree with that. Uh, it's, it's like uh, putting, I mean, to some extent, it makes sense for every uh, human to, to learn how to write and stuff like that. But uh, those are like the basics and they should be really fundamental and it should be way more diverse really early on. And when does the diversity in school start? Like, uh, if, if, if like uh, never. <laughs> I feel yeah. like when I think about it, <laughs> like you, of course, you have certain things where you can go to, but it's all like a really fixed lane. Uh, yeah. And it's hard to change that uh, once you're in there. But yeah, let's 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 come to. Well, you wanted to say something? Yeah, it's very limited. So of course you can choose at least in Germany between do you want to go more into the science direction or language direction, but then you're you're again limited uh, in, in your choices. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the limited option makes it. Uh, 
it's just a really uh, constrained system uh, which does not uh, leave a lot of room for creativity and and uh, expansion. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's come to what you are also doing in 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 Bitcoin. You are in Les Femmes Orange and Terrahash, uh, as as I saw in it. Um, I love the concept of Les Femmes Orange. Um, maybe, and I want to make it a little bit more known. I think, like in Germany and Austria, is really well known. Um, uh, when I speak with with people from from all over the world, they m sometimes don't know it, sometimes actually know it. Um, what is the concept behind it, and and why it's important? Yeah. So uh, Les Femmes Orange is basically um, yeah founded by a small group of women, um, and the idea was given by by Rachel Rachel Gaia. She's she has. Um, English roots, uh, but she's actually uh, living in Germany at the moment. So she's also, um, uh, yeah, yeah, bringing Les Femmes Orange uh, international in yeah international context. Uh, we also have a, a get together uh, in Prague actually on uh, Thursday before the conference. So if anybody's interested, uh, feel free to ping me or to ping Rachel. Um, yeah. So the idea is, or let's say the the reason why Les Femmes Orange exists is because uh, we, uh, from the, the point of view, uh, from a woman's perspective, found that the Bitcoin space is super great. There are many, many brilliant people, but why are there yeah, not so many women? We're, we miss more women. I would like to have more women going to conferences, uh, meetups, and also more women creating, uh, or I don't know, inventing projects or uh, start building a business of, on top of, of Bitcoin. And that's not the case. So we ask ourselves, why is that the case? And uh, we found, or from our experience, um, it's because of two things. Uh, Bitcoin is related to tech and Bitcoin is related to finance. And these two topics are, in general, of course, there are exceptions, uh, in general, not so interesting for women, or at least I experienced it at work. I experienced it um, among friends. Uh, women tend to say, oh, it's I don't know, stocks, that's not interesting for me. I don't understand it. It's not for me. And so uh, the conclusion is the same uh, with Bitcoin. And we try to build an offer for women to, yeah, to start educating themselves or with other women um, that comes from a different perspective. So we, we want to, yeah, teach or we want to make, yeah, we want to explain that Bitcoin is important for society. So we answer questions or start answering the question, why is Bitcoin important for you, for your family, for, for society as a whole? But also next to education, we want to offer to let everybody experience Bitcoin themselves. So most of the time, or many times, women are scared that they don't understand it, that it's too difficult, that it's too tech. Yeah. And they, they, they're not made for this. And we want to show them if you are able to, to use a computer, you are able to own Bitcoin. You are able to, um, yeah, to, to, to use a hardware wallet. And, um, it's, it's, I think it's easier for women to learn from women, or it can be easier because I think we use a different language. We, we look at things from a different perspective and I, I don't want to generalize too much, but um, yeah, I think for a certain group of women, this is um, maybe the way to go and to, 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 to understand and to feel that Bitcoin is important and can change uh, their lives. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and, and for me, it's like, um, I know my statistics, like I, when, when I kind of started out, I had like 4% of female listeners of my podcast. Uh, I worked my way up to 7% now. Oh, wow. 
Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm getting more, uh, but uh, then you can say, oh, okay, yes, it's a, a male host. It's, it's like uh, most speakers are male. I'm trying to fix that, but uh, ma male speakers are just easier to find than, than female speakers. Uh, but then even uh, Natalie Brunel, who is the, the, one of the biggest podcasters uh, ever and I think the biggest one, especially for uh, as a female host, um, she shared this, uh, uh, statistics and she also only had 20% of female uh, listeners. So like there's definitely uh, a, a big gap, like a big uh, um, a difference. I mean, you have, just have to go to, you mentioned Bitcoin Prague, by the way, get your tickets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Bitcoin Prague, it's so important to meet other Bitcoiners in real life. Yes, uh, and there will be many there women, many at women. least from uh, Germany, because uh, I know that many uh, Les Femmes Orange uh, visitors or, uh, yeah, uh, women uh, joining our meetups and also our event in summer, they will come to, to Prague and they also gathered uh, or um, yeah, exchange uh, ideas where I don't know which hotel to book or uh, where to meet, etc. So I think it's it's also great for for women, especially going to Prague this year. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin, or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in the middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague Conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. Yeah, it's always like... Meeting other Bitcoiners in real life is a game changer. Uh, it's yeah. it's last year Bitcoin Sprague conference uh, is why I am uh, here right now. This gave me the energy and gave me the momentum for me personally to like, okay, that's it. Like I love Bitcoin and I want to work in this field because I was not working last time uh, this year, uh, last time at this uh last year at this time in Bitcoin, uh, but I am in now and I'm, I'm, I'm super uh, glad that this conference is there because it gives you a lot of energy. It's like I can encourage just everybody go there, uh, come say hi to Nicole, come say hi to me uh, and, and let's talk there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, 100%. I'm, already really looking, I'm looking forward to, to that event a lot. Um, yes. One question on, on that topic uh, is, did you had any thoughts of going into the Bitcoin uh, industry because it was like, did you have any challenges where like, oh, maybe I should not go in there because it was so male dominated? Is, is there anything that you like, um, you were first not unsure or was was Les, Les Femme Orange helping you in that regard? Or like, how did this, how did this go? <laughs> no, actually my first uh, Bitcoin conference was uh, the one in Innsbruck in 20, 22 yeah so uh, more than two years ago no more than one year exactly. ago i don't know so, yeah. so much happened uh in the past three years um yeah and i went there all by myself so there was nobody from my friends a uh, group of friends nobody wanted to join me uh, neither women nor men so I went there all by myself, but I thought, okay, uh, yeah, 
no matter what, I will, I will um, probably uh, experience many great things. And it was like that. And I mean, Bitcoiners are really open, open-minded and also open to meet new people. So it didn't take too, too long to, to get in touch with people, to talk, to exchange ideas, uh, etc. It was an amazing conference. Um, so for me, it was not the case, but, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm used to, to be in male dominated contexts. So studying mathematics implies, uh, studying with a lot of males, um, working for an IT consultancy implies working with a lot of males. Um, so for me, it was actually not, not an issue, but it was an issue for me to convince other women <laughs> to, to follow me or to uh to find a bitcoin interesting so uh that was the bigger challenge or also to explain uh to my mother why i do all this she, she didn't understand why i would take all my vacation days to go to bitcoin conferences so that was that was that was my challenge and uh, this also um yeah made me uh uh, start uh, my own podcast. Um, yeah, it's, it's a German speaking, uh, podcast, but what I do there is I explain in very short episodes. Every episode is only 21 minutes. I explain Bitcoin without using English words, if, if possible. Uh, I'm using, uh, simple words. Um, and I, 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 I take one topic and then I focus on this topic and, try to to make it as easy to follow as possible and since my mom is uh, listening to this podcast she she finally understands why i'm so e uh, excited um yeah why why bitcoin makes me uh yeah feel so so positive why it makes me f uh, look uh into the future in a positive way etc and i think we just need more women to yeah, to attract more females, and uh, yeah, that's why why I'm uh, I'm passionate about Les Femmes Orange. But uh, personally, I, I would also be fine, uh, or I was fine uh, going to a, to a, to a Bitcoin conference where uh, yeah, there's there are many many more um, guys than women. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's. I think it's just natural because Bitcoin will be owned by everybody anyways. So uh, it, it, at one point it will be like 50, 50%. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I had, I had this discussion with uh, others, especially with males. And many say, uh, forget about it. 50, 50. Uh, no, the wealth is not distributed in that way. And you will not experience this during your a lifetime that a woman will own 50% of Bitcoin. And uh, probably from a rational point of view, this is true, but still uh, this does not stop me from um, trying to work on this issue. Uh, we have this uh, gender pay gap day every year, and it makes me really angry because the, the even bigger issue is the gender wealth gap. And if women don't start investing in Bitcoin or buy Bitcoin, huddle Bitcoin, uh, then this gap will increase over time because uh, we know uh, Bitcoin is uh, growing um, exponentially. Yeah. And this makes me uh, kind of angry and motivates me to, to continue. continue. Yeah, it could be a, a big problem, actually. Um, what I meant is because everybody will own it like... Uh... Not not the the wealth of the the peoples, uh, but the Bitcoin will be distributed with everyone. But they will yeah. have uh, yeah. different amounts of Bitcoin. Definitely, it was also interesting that came up in one of my podcasts because I always say like adoption rate is so good in in the uh, in in the third world countries with like Nigeria, El Salvador. Like the the Western world is kind of arrogant to Bitcoin uh, and don't understand it. Um, but then I got a comment uh, on my YouTube channel where like, but I guess most Bitcoin are still owned by the Western world. <laughs> like the adoption rate is probably higher in Nigeria, but most of the Bitcoin are actually probably in the, in the Western world because the uh, purchasing power is just so much uh, bigger, which is an inter interesting thought. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, 
it's interesting um, because when you have now this this whatever it is like maybe it's like ten percent females and ninety uh, percent males in in the in the Bitcoin sphere. I don't know what the exactly the the rate is. Maybe it's like eighty twenty. Maybe it's like ninety five five. Um, and then you extrapolate that out in the future when everybody wants have Bitcoin and everybody has Bitcoin and every, everything is uh, m made with Bitcoin then uh, this wealth gap could actually increase a lot. Uh, as you said, like it could be a big problem. It, it is for every uh, uh, woman watching this now, this should be like the biggest motivation to go to all your uh, female friends and say, hey, we, we need to, to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> like, it's, it's yes. a, like wealth gap, we, we can go on the streets and, and demonstrate because of uh, 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 that we don't get paid that much. But yeah. Uh, yeah. most effective thing, like buy a lot of Bitcoin, then you, then you yeah. get ahead also. <laughs> and also one interesting uh, fact we experience uh, from our uh, Les Femmes Orange uh, meetups, um, we experience that especially women that are a bit older, they tend to be interested much more than young women because they see an issue for their own lives. They look at their, um, what is it called, rent, so they retire in a few years, maybe in 10 years or maybe 15 years. And then they already know, okay, I will have an issue when I'm old, when I retire. So I need to do something. So there's a problem that these women see and they want to solve it. And Bitcoin is for them uh, one solution or can be a solution. And um, since that's at least that's my experience, young women have different types of problems and they don't look at the future when they retire but they look at i don't know maybe growing a family or something or i don't know uh, buying um, a, a house or i don't know uh, plan big trips vacation don't know it's just different a different perspective and um and not so interesting for them unfortunately i i wish we had many more uh younger women also um joining Les Femmes Orange. I mean, there are a few, yes, uh, but I wish um, more young women would think about Bitcoin, um, read one book, watch YouTube videos, uh, content, whatever. Um, yeah, much more. What I also, I mean, this is 100% my subjective uh, experience and, and no studies involved here. Um, what I found is women are more risk adverse. Like they are usually more um, conservative and they don't want uh, the risk associated with Bitcoin, which we know that there is not. Uh, but the mainstream media is, is picturing Bitcoin as this big, risky, speculating thing uh, and this is what most people think of Bitcoin. And what I found is most of my male friends are okay with that. <laughs> and most of my female friends are not. They are conservative. They, they don't, they, they, they are collectors. They like, they, they, they don't want to uh, have this risk of something speculating. And this is just like my, my personal experience when I walked up to a, a male friend of mine and talked to them, Hey, Bitcoin. And they're like, Oh, okay, let's try it. Yeah. And with females, they, they have way more questions. Uh, they're way more uh, cautious when it comes to the topic. Uh, this is just purely on, on my uh, subjective experience. But uh, is, is, is that something that you also think is, is, is true? Or is that something that could be the topic? Yes, we experience it uh, um, yeah, in our workshops. So we also teach hands on how to uh, set up um, a hardware wallet, for example, and then of course we uh, get into discussion with uh, women, etc. And we find that it takes much, much more time for women to really, uh, yeah, to 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 really practice how to use Bitcoin to actually make their first transaction. So the need for information before doing so is much higher. In, in our personal subjective experience, um, also no no uh, statistics involved here. Um, and for men, it's like, okay, let's try the uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, okay, how, how can I, uh, where can I buy it? Okay, I just do it. What is it, hardware wallet? Okay, how, how can I set up? I watch a YouTube video. Okay, I, I do it easy. For, for women, it's more like, what could happen? 
uh, like the risk aversion. And then it takes just much more time. But we also find um, if you learn from each other, if you learn from other women, if you see, okay, she's a woman, she can do it, I can do it as well. So um, it's, it's easier if you have a role models, uh, also female role models showing them it's easy, you can do it, you can run a computer, you can use a computer, you can use a hardware wallet. So, yeah, yeah that, I that's why I, 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 100 percent yeah 100 percent and i that's that's one reason why i also try to give uh, every woman that i find in the bitcoin space uh, uh, a stage here i mean i try to give every blab that uh, wants to talk about bitcoin a stage on the podcast because i think like there are so many great stories uh, around bitcoin uh and yeah like just like putting uh people on top of a stage and this is even a broader broader thing because maybe sometimes people don't recognize or don't have um uh, michael Zele is not good for s some portion of of bitcoiners maybe cypherini moose is not the pe best person for some uh bitcoiners so that's why we need to have a lot of different speakers uh to speak about bitcoin on on big stages uh and uh, i I have seen when I see in my YouTube feed and when I see in my overall feeds, I mostly listen to other men, like for mm -hmm. advice, for stuff like that. Uh, and I probably, uh, with, with most of the females, it's probably also like when they lose, uh, try to, as you said before, when they uh, want to get to know about Bitcoin, they are tending to first look at other women. What are they saying about it? And so when we get to a stage where there are more um, women involved in the stages and speakers and stuff like that, and we're trying to go, do a good job here, then we have like a, a better chance in like evening that out because then there's not did it. But yeah, when you look at my YouTube, then you look, <laughs> scroll down, it's like men, 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 women, women, yeah. but it is like that. Uh, so I, I, I try to keep it uh fresh but it's it's not that easy like the speakers are definitely m more on the on the male side but uh, I'm, I'm trying to do my best in, in uh, giving more and more females a, a stage yeah thank you very much for this uh also from um our um impression or our, our impression is that mostly for example conferences are built by men and i mean that's that's then a not natural let's say evolvement then uh, that also the topics that are visible on stage uh, etc are or tend to be a bit more interesting for men and i, I would love that uh yeah women and men team up and exchange ideas and yeah try to to also put topics on stage that are more um, attractive for women and just have a woman in the team when designing conference uh, might help here. So this will be my, um, yeah, my wish for future conferences. Is there a Les Femmes Orange conference uh, in plan? That would be, I think, awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, we have a lot of plans for the future. Uh, time is, uh, is just uh, an issue. Um, but we have an event uh, in Germany, uh, in, uh, the Bitcoin Hotel uh, close to Stuttgart, uh, end of July. So if you're, uh, you're, if you're around and if you know a little bit of German, then, then you're, of course, uh, warmly invited. And let's see what the future brings. Uh, so um, when, I, when I quit my fiat job, there's much more room for... Um, yeah, for Bitcoin education, also much more room for Les Femmes Orange. And uh, I'm really excited about next year. Um, I mean, of course, Bitcoin is not only about the price, but um, attraction comes with higher prices. And um, yeah, I just hope that we can just yeah use the moment and uh, yeah try to, to make it bigger, try to... Um, reach uh, many more women especially of course uh, men are also um invited by the way we don't uh we don't close doors for for men it's just we we just make it more women friendly um yeah so maybe there will be a Les Femmes Orange, uh, conference in the future mm. in the future and that's a big thing honestly because um 
the the last farm last farm orange i i still, still cannot pronounce it even though i said it so many times uh yeah. that it's not closed only for women is a big thing and uh i don't know who who uh was was a big supporter of that inside of the team but it's a really great thing to do because when you close it down uh th then it's like this this fiat kind of uh, uh woman empowerment you're like oh we, we have to keep them in a, in a thing but i feel like that th the fact that it's open makes it uh, 20 times better because yeah. then it's yeah. actually like we want to give them a, f a female friendly environment and don't want to separate these things like this is kind of like the fiat uh, thinking like we are separating uh, stuff but that's yeah that's just uh, my opinion yeah. It was actually uh, Lina, Lina Seiche, the mother of the little hodler. Uh, she was also involved in our uh, debut event uh, end of, when was it, 2023, uh, when we had our uh, first first event, uh, or no, J January 2023. Oh, I, I just mixing up uh, uh, times, but uh, yeah. We had the discussion because there are pros and cons, and there are really women um, asking for women-only events. I mean, they they are there, um, but we we now gained more experience. We uh, gathered uh, feedback from females, etc., and we found that uh, sometimes it's the other way around. There are females, and um, they want to to get their husbands involved or their sons and uh, they they like the opportunity to to take to to bring them uh to meet up or to bring them uh to our um weekend events yeah and we found that uh it really uh, yeah it's it's just the market decides uh we have have the impression that we also attract different types of men it's it's the more I know it's cliche and it's uh, there are exceptions, but it's more the, maybe the more introverts uh, type of uh, guy who um, yeah just likes to have a more let's say calm environment because uh, you, you know it yourself there are also uh, meetups and conferences uh, um, yeah mainly run by by men and then there's also sometimes. Uh, a hidden fight who who um yeah who explains it best who knows it best like you know this uh i mean it's, it's, there's nothing bad about it but uh i think there are people who like to have it a bit more i don't know the community like the everybody should feel uh fine it's not about um yeah about explaining it the best or being the best or knowing it best it's just uh yeah, it, it's just it, yeah, it's just a community. So the the growing together, like this kind of atmosphere, and you have it more a bit more. At least we feel it um, during our events. Uh, it's it's more yeah, being together, learning from each other. It's really a, a really nice um, yeah environment. Yes, it, it's, it's definitely true. And um, even though uh, in, in the Bitcoin community, it's actually way better than in most other, yes. uh, I was yes. I, I was in IT security and I was in other fields. Um, there it's like 10x from, from that. Even even if you're in a, um, I was at the privacy and security event uh, in, in also in the Bitcoin hotel in Blochingen. Uh, in, uh, and there was a really high, uh, percentage of, of, of men because it's Bitcoin. And then it's the special topic of privacy and security. Um, and even there, like it's, it's a, it's a nice environment still. It's a kind of friendly environment, but I know exactly what you mean. But, uh, the, the, the contrast then to other communities and to other fields that I experienced outside of Bitcoin is then even 10x, 20x uh, different. Uh, and it's it's interesting. And I feel like uh, in a way, Bitcoin is like this humbling thing where the ego is less there, where like you you have to learn, like when you have big characters that got a little, little bit overshot ego, like when we talk about R Roger Ver, who mm -hmm. was really good in the Bitcoin community, but at some point he drifted off and it was probably an ego thing that uh, got him uh, on, on the wrong track. Bitcoin humbles you because 
who who now listens to him <laughs> nobody uh, and when uh, no, no it, it does not matter who how big he is and whatever he's saying if he's saying something wrong or he's uh, on an ego trip the bitcoin community uh will uh, cancel him but uh, they they will uh they will humble him the bitcoin itself will humble him uh, because uh it's the first thing that does not work like everything else there's no hierarchy in bitcoin it's just like bitcoin is its own thing of course in bitcoin there are speakers that are more well known and they have probably more influence in the community that's definitely a thing but there's no hierarchy in bitcoin and that's a that's a beautiful thing and but i definitely know what you mean uh and and uh, I, i love how you also explained it um what else uh before we uh get to the end routine because you're already at the, the one hour mark it's it flew by <laughs> really quickly <laughs> uh what else are you doing in bitcoin com in the bitcoin community you, i think terra space is also something uh what else are you doing Yeah, so uh, TerraHash is a, I would say, in the German-speaking space, a well-known company focusing on Bitcoin and energy and, um, yeah, uh, yeah, researching how um, Bitcoin mining could also helping um, in the European Union, for example, um, to change the way energy is or, um, yeah, electricity is generated. So... Uh, this is, uh, yeah, one thing I'm there, I'm a representative and this means that, um, yeah, I help the team, uh, whenever it's needed, for example, going to, um, conferences, explaining, uh, Bitcoin to others. So last year, for example, I went to the, uh, famous invest trade fair, um, and there we were kind of the Bitcoin advocates. Yeah, and besides that, I'm also a, a mentor and a speaker for Bitcoin Talents. It's an international education program run by the Frankfurt School of Finance. It's a private university in Germany, and the program is for free. It's a kind of mentoring program. It's um, it, it lasts 18 weeks, and every second week uh, you exchange Uh, what you learned uh, last time um, with your peers. And there's also um, uh, one guest speaker every time. So this is also uh, what I do. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. And maybe there are many more projects to come. Currently, most of the, uh, the, 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 the biggest part of, my, of the time in the Bitcoin space, I use it for the podcast uh, because um, it, It really takes uh, much time to put valuable information into 21 minutes. I, uh, yeah, I didn't expect that to be a, a, such a big a challenge, uh, but um, I want the podcast to be, um, yeah, something that you can also start in a year. So I don't put um, the latest information inside. I don't do interviews at the moment. Um, I just explain a content in a way that it's uh, digestible by everybody without uh, any knowledge in terms of finance or without any economics background, without any tech background. Um, yeah, but let's say, uh, let's see what the future um, will bring once I'm out of the I'm fiat, fiat game. <laughs> It does a lot to your brain when you have a full-time commitment to the one thing, and especially if it's Bitcoin. Uh, it, yeah. uh, I'm I'm already looking forward to what you will do in the in the in the coming uh, years uh, once you are free and out in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say it like that. <laughs> um, is there anything uh, you you look forward to, to this year uh, except uh, <laughs> you you making the the jump to the Bitcoin world? Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is such an exciting year, right? We have the elections in the United States. We have many geopolitical uh, issues, but uh, since it's the, the first, uh, the first so-called bull run that um, I actively experienced because I just started in, in, yeah, during the peak of the last one, right? I'm really excited to talk to to newbies so people who really fell into the rabbit hole are really excited cannot stop talking about the topic um i, I really uh, hope first of all uh, that it happens and uh yeah that i get to uh, get in touch with these people and I, i i yeah i'm really 
yeah, happy to see how the space evolves. And this is kind of uh, just around the corner. So um, yeah, I think this, this will be uh, the most exciting uh, part of this and next year. Mm, the, our Android team today is also kind of in, in that direction. But before we have one more question, um, what are you currently passionate about or learning deeply uh, besides uh, the things that we already covered in the podcast? Is there anything that you are learning or are you passionate about that we did not cover in the podcast till now? Yes, uh, there are many things actually. So uh, first of all, I try to learn how to create reels and social media and stuff, because if I do uh, <laughs> Bitcoin education, um, of course, I have to uh, to cover social media in, in a digital space, right? Or in the digital world. Uh, and, and I have to admit, it's really hard for Bitcoiners on Instagram. So if anybody has uh, um, yeah, figured out how to... Um, yeah how to increase content, uh, et cetera, on Instagram, please reach out. I would be happy uh, about that. And uh, what I also learn is related to more uh, spiritual topics. So, um, yeah, like I said, uh, once I, I found out, okay, the way I, I was looking at economics is different now. So what is true? Uh, how can I define truth? Is truth uh, accessible for humans at all these kind of things uh these led me to yeah to to get uh, yeah to to yeah to to read a lot about uh where where are we coming from what are our origins uh, what is the meaning of life uh, these kind of things, but I'm uh, still in the process and there's so, so much more to learn. Uh, so maybe this is um, in five years or so when there's no, not so much education needed anymore because everything will be on the, on, yeah, on the table. Uh, maybe this will be uh, the next project. The, the small questions like the meaning of life you are trying yeah, to answer. The, yeah, the small <laughs> questions, you're right. <laughs> Uh, amazing. Uh, we have an end routine in the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest uh, without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and your question from the previous guest is, how high do you think Bitcoin will go till the end of the year? Oh, yeah, that is so difficult. And I think I'm super biased because I read all the... Um, uh, statements by Adam Beck and Samson Mao and etc. Uh, but oh, this is also what I'm learning at the moment to understand the Bitcoin power law. Uh, because I learned it's not a model, it's actually the growing uh, DNA of Bitcoin. So this is also what I learned in the Bitcoin space. So uh, and according to, to power law, I think, oh, is it this? Uh, by the end of the year, next year, it should be um, Two hundred thousand dollars, if it exactly follows uh, the model. But of course, um, it might be higher or lower. Um, this year, I hope it, we really make it to one hundred thousand, and this would be the guess. Yeah, I have two uh, mentions for the guests uh, for for the listeners. We mentioned before Lina Sache quickly, and uh, I actually have an episode with her which was amazing. And I also have with Giovanni, who is like the kind of the creator of the power law uh, and the advocate for it. Uh, and over two hour episode with him, like two hours and fifteen, uh, where we dive deep into the power law, <laughs> really deep in okay. the power law. Then I need to watch uh, so that one. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's it's deep one. Like um, he prepared um, a presentation and I wanted to, before we started the presentation, I wanted to clear up some questions before and have him uh, discuss a lot of uh, like the, the things that we have to discuss before. And he started the presentation around a uh, minute 55 or something like that. <laughs> so uh, it is like a, a, a lot. There was a whole podcast before the actual topic, uh, which was interesting. And it, it was like, for me, it was like a Monday evening and we recorded till 1 a.m. in the morning, my wow. time. Uh, and I loved it so much, uh, but it was a lot. And there's a lot of discussions around the power law, uh, uh, if it, it makes sense or not and stuff like that. But 
I encourage everybody to just like check it out and make their own opinion on that. And uh, yeah, I have an episode with him uh, over two hours. It's, in my opinion, a great overview of the topic. Uh, and from there, you can go deeper. Uh, and uh, it's it's also one of my more successful episodes. I think it got over 10,000 uh, uh, views only on, on YouTube. Uh, people really liked it. And I wasn't astonished. I think like, 25 or 30 percent of the listeners actually watch it till the end like a two-hour really? episode with, wow. uh, it's which wow. is which is fascinating for me uh but yeah uh that's that's just like for the the viewers if they want to have like th those things that we mentioned uh there are more podcasts like that um thank you nicole for being on uh thank you for being part of my show uh where can people uh listen to your podcast where can people ask you questions what are the best ways to reach out yeah, you can uh, reach out uh, via uh, Twitter, also via uh, LinkedIn, also via Instagram. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, my podcast is called uh, Bitcoin Kurz Erklärt, so Bitcoin Briefly Explained. Uh, and yeah, you also find it on every platform where you find podcasts and Spotify, other podcasts, YouTube music, uh, etc. Yeah would be happy about feedback and of course uh, feel free to reach out i read every message and answer every message thank you nicole and for everyone watching i'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye bye thank you robin thank you for having me it was great to talk to you <laughs> <laughs>